Hi, welcome to Business Core Tutoring. I'm Justin Fleming. Today we'll be covering overs and unders. An important concept to learn in Accounting 350 is how different transactions will affect the balance sheet. Errors and omissions can either overstate or understate the different parts of the balance sheet. By being tested on how different accounts are either overstated or understated, you are being tested on your general accounting knowledge. Let's start our lesson by defining exactly what an overstatement is and what an understatement is. An overstatement is when you have a higher recorded amount than you actually have in one of your accounts. And an understatement is exactly the opposite. That means you have recorded a lower amount than you actually have in one of your accounts. As an example, let's pretend that a college has $1 million in its cash account. However, they recently forgot that they paid out $50,000 in some kind of an expense. But the college is still reporting that they have $1 million in that cash account when they actually only have $950,000. In this case, the cash account is overstated they're reporting more money in their account than they actually have. Inversely, if that college received $50,000, then that means they have $1,050,000 in their account. However, if they're reporting that they only have a million dollars, then they're understating their cash account. The same principle holds true for liabilities as well. To practice, let's take a look at a simple transaction. Suppose that Justin's gym has $1,000 in its cash account and makes a cash payment of $150 for some equipment. However, the bookkeeper accidentally records his cash payment as a debit to cash, increasing it to $1,150 when it should have been decreased. Pause this video and try showing how this transaction will either overstate or understate the different parts of the balance sheet. Answer this question in the format that's shown on the screen using an O for overstated, a U for understated, and writing down an N for no effect. In order to effectively answer this question, we have to figure out what went wrong and what the correct entry should have been. In the previous two examples, we are only looking at how the cash account was either overstated or understated. In our questions, and also in your class, your questions won't look at individual accounts, but rather assets, liabilities, and net income as a whole. Looking at our previous two examples, we see that cash was overstated in one, while it was understated in the other. Since cash is an asset, if it is overstated, then assets are overstated as well. And if cash is understated, then assets are understated. In this case, the cash account was debited, or increased, when it should have been credited, or decreased. Since Justin's gym had $1,000 in its cash account, adding $150 to that brought it to $1,150, when in reality that $150 should have been subtracted, leaving the account with $850. Since $1,150, the amount that's reported, is higher than the actual amount of $850, the account is overstated. Your answer should look like this. Since cash is overstated, and since cash is an asset, subsequently assets as a whole are overstated. Now what we've done so far has been pretty basic. Cash has been overstated, and therefore assets have been overstated. If an account such as accounts payable was overstated instead of cash, then liabilities would be overstated instead of assets, since accounts payable is a liability. Something to keep in mind when determining whether net income is overstated or understated is that expenses reduce net income. So if your expense is overstated, then your net income will be understated. While overstating revenue or sales will result in an overstatement in net income because revenue and sales increase net income, an overstatement in expenses will cause an understatement in net income because expenses reduce your net income. Let's try another example to demonstrate this. Justin Shim has just paid his rent of $2,000. However, the bookkeeper accidentally recorded them as having paid $20,000 instead of the correct amount of $2,000. Again, to answer this question, let's try and think of what the correct journal entry would have been. The correct entry would have been to credit the cash account for $2,000 and to debit the rent expense account for $2,000. If we look at the T account for both cash and rent expense, we can visualize how this error has affected those accounts. If we pretend that there was $5,000 in the cash account, and $4,000 in the accumulated rent expense account, the correct credit to cash would reduce that balance to $3,000, whereas the correct debit to rent expense would increase that account to $6,000. However, since $20,000 was credited and debited to these accounts instead of the correct $2,000, the cash account now has a negative $15,000 balance, which is much lower than what it should be, and the rent expense account has a $24,000 balance, which is much higher than it should be. It's pretty clear that cash is understated while rent expense is overstated. So what should our answer look like? Since cash is an asset, we would say that assets are understated, 
And since rent expense affects net income, we would say that net income is understated as well. Even though rent expense is overstated, we would show net income as being understated because the higher your expenses are, the lower your net income is going to be. Thank you for watching. Today we covered overstatements and understatements. You will find links to additional practice videos either on the screen or below. And a special thanks to Zohar Ahiyasef for filming and editing.